Welcome back to another episode of Consciously Clueless, the podcast that teaches you how to live a healthier lifestyle that makes you and the planet happier. The world is changing quickly. Sometimes it feels like you can't keep up. I hear you. You want to make the world a better place. You care, but you don't know where to start. You know taking care of yourself is important, but how? I get it. I have a history of diving into a new endeavor, seeking perfection, and quickly feeling like I failed. Whether it was going vegan or learning how to recycle more, I wish I had guidance to keep me on track and not overwhelmed. I can't lie, the world needs your help, but it doesn't need you to be perfect. This podcast is here to help. Here we go. Today on the podcast, I talked to the host of the Conscious Action Podcast, Brian Burneman. Thank you for joining me on the podcast, Brian. I'm really excited to chat with you. Yeah, likewise. So I saw that a past guest of mine was on your podcast, and I looked into the Conscious Action podcast, and I was like, sounds like we have some things in common, (laughs) and reached out to you as soon as I could. So let's start there with the work you do in the world, the podcast, the work. Let's start there. Mm. Yeah, it's so much different work that I do in the world. And I know that this is something that we're wanting to talk about. The work that I do is mostly how I want to live mm. my life. A lot of times I actually get asked, like when, when I meet people in different places and say, so what do you do? And I tell them, I live life. And then they're like, okay, yeah, they meant work. So then I share what I do. Actually, I always go back to me trying to understand my experience, my own journey, both internally and externally. And through that exploration that actually led to the work that I do, I didn't embark on this journey to be able to work as a teacher, coach, healer, all of the different labels that, or business owner, all of the different labels that I might have. I went through my own journey and then little by little, I started to share that as part of my own process. And suddenly 15 years later, that's how (laughs) I'm still doing this. And I do this in a lot of different ways. I, and it keeps on evolving all of the time. I teach at the university here in, in Auckland, in New Zealand. I, I run my business that is called Conscious Action. That is all about the well-being of people, the collective, and the planet. I run my business as Brian Burneman, <laughs> that is a little bit more focused on personal well-being and more of a spiritual lens as well. So I do a lot of healing work, whether that's through the body somatically, energetically, through sound. I work with people one-on-one. I work with businesses, engaging their employees in their well-being journeys. And mostly it's about getting people to understand how they can actually create sustainable changes so that they can actually have an impact in the world. So that's more or less like overall, it's Mm -hmm. supporting people on their own journey, on their unique journey because we're all different on how to live consciously and what was the spark for the beginning of your journey in living more consciously before it became the work you were doing in the world i i was really fortunate that my parents when i was a kid started their own journey Mm -hmm. and i started to actually realize not so Consciously at that moment, but I started to realize that things at home were changing. We stopped having dinner in front of the TV and we actually were having conversations. My parents were recommending these different books that were more around personal well-being, spirituality. And I started to read them and I started to connect with that. And then through my teenage years, They would invite me and my siblings, if we wanted to go to a class, a meditation class, a yoga class, a sound healing. And throughout all of that, for whatever reason, there was something in me that was interested and was resonating with those things. And as I started to explore that, I realized that I was actually 
super disconnected from myself and from my body and from my feelings up until the those experiences i was super stressed out and i didn't know where i fit in really i was in a lot of ways a little of an outsider even within my group of friends i was like always a little bit different so all of these different practices that i started to explore really gave me a place of connecting with myself and reconnecting and i started to actually learn about the experience that was part of me from the neck down that i didn't know up until that moment i started to i was like oh wow this is how feelings feel like mm. and i didn't know that and then i was like oh this is what energy feels like and little by little starting to integrate the things that i was doing in those spaces into my life so as an example when I was 16 and I started driving back in Argentina, I used to have road rage, like really bad. <laughs> and one day I just realized that someone, when they cut me off, I didn't react in the same way. I was just like, oh, wow, there's all of these feelings, but I didn't react. It. So that gave me an understanding that actually what I'm doing in those classes is transferring into my life. So I started to do that a little bit more consciously. And yeah, then 20 years later, <laughs> I am here. <laughs> yeah, just quick 20 years later. It's funny though, how those moments can hit you upside the head almost. It's like the universe is like screaming at you. And sometimes you clue in enough to listen to it. But I was similarly driving and I didn't have road rage, but I was late for my teacher training for yoga. It was the place I took it is about two, two and a half hours away from where I live. So it would be like one weekend a month you go down. And I was just freaking out and sweating and anxious that I was going to be like a little bit late. And I just was beside myself. And then I started laughing out loud. All of a sudden, I just started laughing and I was like, you're on your way to a mindfulness and yoga and meditation weekend and you're losing your mind over being 15 minutes late. Something's not right here. And it stuck with me. It stuck with me enough in the future to have more of those moments to be like, okay, here's your reality. So what are you going to do with it? And that got a little bit easier. And I always have to say this, but I think it needs to be said every time almost is that it's not that it's created this perfection, right? That I don't get mad <laughs> ever again, but it gets easier and you start to notice things more and it, it it's a game changer. I I was talking a couple of years ago with someone after I, I gave this talk, this young person, I think they were in their twenties, young for me at least, like they they came and they said i loved what you were sharing but i couldn't connect with you it feels like you were too far and i realized i was sharing how we can actually live without stress in the way that we are living with it now in the way that i used to experience and then with all of my understandings and my practices i haven't actually experienced stress in 15 years now and I was sharing that it is possible to get there, but I didn't share how much stressed I used to be under before. I, I thought that was a given. If if I am in my late thirties and I haven't been stressed in fifteen years, that means that for the first twenty years of my life I was stressed, but I didn't say that. Yeah. Therefore, this person couldn't connect. So I started to actually be more intentional about actually sharing that because those thing and this isn't look at me i'm like i i don't care about that this is this is possible it is possible to live without chronic stress it is possible to live in a way that is more aligned with who we are and how we want to explore our lives it is possible to actually live differently and to be and these are the things that as you're sharing that it's not about perfection because what is perfection first and how does one perfection actually translate towards other person's perfection? And when we are able to, to understand that, 
one of the biggest things that I have learned throughout all of my journey has been presence and compassion mm -hmm. to myself and to others. Those for me are key. You know what you were saying about being late and it's funny that you're going to a mindfulness like presence thing and then <laughs> that's I actually I was telling like some of my students at the university if you're late somewhere if you can just send a message to other person telling them you're late and then just relax because yeah. you cannot change the fact that you are late and having compassion for yourself in that moment that it's for next time I'm going to learn that I need to live like earlier or whatever it is I need to do something different so that this doesn't repeat but in that moment how is that just ruminating on that going to support you so those things as we are able in the moment to become more and more conscious that actually helps us to just relax like I always share with the shoulders it's like people are living up here with the shoulders and it's just relax take a deep breath and drop your shoulders it's like for me the shoulders a lot of things are quite a barometer of how stressed people are yes and it's like just move your shoulders like th these are some of the things you know that I find that were so supportive of me and I find Sometimes it's just we need to, to share with others the learnings that we've had because some people might resonate and might take something from it and be like, oh, actually, that is for me. That is for me. That actually not. I'll just leave it aside. And being able to, to explore this. But we need to understand, and this is part of my aim and understand my mission in sharing my story and my learnings is that most people don't know what's possible. Most people don't know that there's a different way of being and doing things. Most people are just living in autopilot and they're just doing the things that they are seeing around them. So they haven't learned these tools and these different methodologies or these different perspectives. So if I can share mine and whoever resonates with it takes it so wonderful and whoever doesn't, I'm still going to be me. <laughs> I think that's so important and especially when so much of the information we're getting is from online and from on social media that if you see someone you and we all know the tripe of everyone just shares their perfect moments but there's still this psychology that we see someone doing the things that maybe even we want to do maybe it's more you know living more sustainably or meditating or going vegan and if we have any indication that someone's doing it in a way that we couldn't do or that is perfect, it's easier to be like, no, that's not going to work for me anyway. But if you talk more about, yeah, I was chronically stressed and that's why I got here. I find a similar conversation happening sometimes when I talk about being vegan online. It seems like some of the trolly comments have this assumption that I came out of the womb as someone who was vegan and meditating and was like, I love the earth. And I did not. I ate too many chicken strips and had more dairy than I want to think about. And I grew up hunting and fishing and I didn't think about the world in terms of sustainability for, I'm just, I can list all the things. And, but it's a reminder that you have to talk about that stuff too, because that's the relatability part of finding yeah. people at the different times in your journey that it's the same for us too, right? It's not like we're sitting here being like, we've got it figured out. But I get caught in that too, seeing somebody else at a different place and being like, oh, wow, why am mm. I not here? But because of mindfulness, I stop myself a little bit quicker than I used to in terms mm. of like doom scrolling Instagram. And one, one thing that you just mentioned that I think that it's important. One is like that sharing where we've been. Like I grew up in Argentina as a typical kid in the city like for me food comes from the supermarket meat and dairy is the food i had no connection to nature i had no connection to myself one of the biggest things that from what you mentioned that i think that it's so important is to understand as we are able to develop a better relationship to ourselves and understand ourselves more is 
our actions and how they are aligning with our values, what we stand for and how we want to live. And I think that this is so paramount because this is why a lot of times I had, I, I have run a lot of events around veganism mm -hmm. and, and some people in the audience were like, you're not telling everyone to go vegan. I'm like, I'm sharing my reasons why I am vegan. And if that's not what these people value, I'm not going to force them into something that they are not. Now, saying that, I do believe that we all care. We all actually, once we actually connect within ourselves, we all are kind, loving, compassionate beings that we have layers on top. This is part of my work, working with trauma, working with energetic blockages that prevent a lot of us from actually seeing that within us. Therefore, our actions might not be those, but there's something within that there's a little of inner conflict. And sometimes people need to connect from one perspective or from another. Like I often share with, with people, my change on first my diet was because of me and my health. Then it was because of the environment. Same. And then through that, I understood as well, which I was super ignorant. Oh, this is how actually it is for the animals. I didn't know. Therefore, that was an another layer that supported my behavior. But I didn't know. And I know that most people actually don't know yeah. what is the state of things. And they actually don't know how it relates to them. And um, I, I often share with, with my students, especially at the university, because they are, they are younger. And I tell them, be kind with yourself where you are, because majority of people that are living on Earth are on automatic pilot. They are in survival mode. They haven't had the chance or they don't have the capacity in this moment to question their beliefs, to question their actions. And therefore, they are just doing the best that they can. This is why I don't judge others. Do I want everyone to be like vegan? Of course, it's about compassion. But I'm also compassionate towards people. And through my understanding on trauma, I understand how people need to dissociate, need to disconnect, and need to be able to do things. And they don't want a lot of times to be shown the image of the animal being slaughtered because it's too confronting. And this is this is the thing of understanding for me. One is like, we need to do this inner work for ourselves. We need to unlearn. We need to reconnect. We need to heal. We need to understand how all of us like internally operate so that then we understand how we're not separate at all from the outside. And then understanding through learning, because we actually, most of us are ignorant on how things actually take place in the world, we start to change our behavior based on an understanding that, okay, that actually the resources that are necessary for that to actually come into my hand is huge. Do I want to do that? I didn't know anything about the food industry when I was younger. Even when I started to do this all personal work for me, I didn't know anything about the fashion industry. And mm. one of the things with that is that I, and I tell people, especially I tell men a lot of times when I have been running events for the last eight years through fashion revolution, which is a movement globally of understanding if you're wearing clothes, you're part of the fashion industry. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't need to be high fashion or have 200 things. If you have a t-shirt, if you have pants, you're part of the fashion industry. Understanding the impact on the environment, the impact on people, the impact on the resources, like transportation. Like the more that I have learned how everything is connected, 
the easier it has been to do the actions that align with me, knowing that I still live within the society. And up until the moment that I might decide to live completely off grid, which I don't want to do, I want to be connected, yeah. then I'm going to have an impact. I'm going to have a footprint. How big or small is up to me. And the more that I realize, okay, there's there's no perfection with this, but I don't really buy it. I don't like I don't buy anything with single use plastic because I can take my all my reusable stuff everywhere. I try to live low waste or what it would be called zero waste. And I still have since 2018 a jar where I put all of my rubbish and still not full and I live in a city. Saying that and I eat vegan, I and and I grow some food here at home. I eat organic because I understand the impact on that both on the soil environment and my, my own well-being. I don't watch the news. So many layers on choosing how I want to be. And yet, I have heard from so many people so many times, like certain things. And I don't know, I, I went and I went to visit my family that they are in Europe and the US and they're like, you're flying. And I'm like, yes, I value more being with my family with yeah. understanding on the impact on flying. I'm not saying, I, I don't say that I'm perfect. I'm doing what's right for me. And because also I know, okay, this is having a huge impact, the flying like once a year, then I know, okay, the rest of the year that I'm not doing that, I am aiming to not only reduce my footprint, I'm actually creating positive ripples. This is part of the understanding regeneration and not just sustainability. We don't need to sustain, we need to regenerate. Mm. And this is part of that. I think that's so important and such a good reminder for everyone that wants to do better and feels guilty about it, right? Because I think another thing that happens is for many people, I'm putting myself in this category, who grew up with enough privilege to not have to think about a lot of the bad things going on in the world and didn't have to learn about these things because they weren't affecting me. You then get that classic guilt of, I'm a bad person. Why didn't I know? And there's so much work to be done there in learning about where you fit in the bigger system, right? It's by design we don't know this shit. It is profitable for us to not know what is going on, right? And it's easy to feel bad about it. And then that can so often lead to being paralyzed and not doing anything because it's so overwhelming. And I think sometimes these conversations feel like that for folks who haven't encountered a conversation around going vegan or whatever it is. It feels like you're being personally guilted and attacked. And some of that is the inner work we have to do to be able to hear feedback and hear opinions that are different from ours. And some of it is to understand like this actually isn't your individual fault. There is like a bigger system at play and you can have a part in dismantling some of that bullshit. I found this bit is really important. The, again, doing this work for ourselves, because through all of our programming, conditioning, trauma, we are not actually choosing. We are mm. reacting to life instead of responding to life. That for me, when we embark on a conscious journey, we move from reacting to responding. This is key as well to understand what, what you're saying. And this is the compassionate bit for me is not getting people to feel guilty about the choices that they are taking now or that they have taken. We have always done the best that we could in the moment based on the information that we knew. Right. And when we're able to understand that, we can feel compassion. And, and I always say to everyone, 
I understand my privilege. I am a male, white. I'm, I'm Latin American, but like for some people, like I'm still white. So I'm a male. I'm white. I'm educated. I am. I've had possibilities in life that a lot of people don't have in terms of finding out about all of these things when I was younger. I, I understand my privilege, and through that, and because I had this, one of my students once told me. Like that he was feeling guilty because he had all of this privilege, like he felt this pressure. I'm like, okay, let's explore where that guilt is coming from. What you are saying, we are part of a system, but also we have internalized these systems. How can we unravel and understand how we are part of that? And what can we do with our privilege instead of being paralyzed? Because I, I asked this person, okay, First, we need to work on understanding that guilt and processing it. And also, how is that guilt or being paralyzed actually supporting you and how you want to be in the world and how you want to create change in the world? Because guilt is not actually going to make anyone do anything positive. Guilt is paralyzing. Compassion, on the flip side, moves us to take action. Compassion is understanding there is people or different beings suffering and I feel moved to act. Now, my action might be super small, super localized. It might be just within my household or depending on my place or my position in life, it might be bigger for the community or even bigger, but it doesn't matter. Like. How big that is, it doesn't matter because we all have our space, we all have our place and we all have a ripple effect that we create. And a lot of times, and this is one of the things that I tell people, me doing my work on myself to stay well, to stay balanced, to stay in alignment, that is actually work for the environment, for people, for the collective. And this is one of the things that most people don't understand. This is sometimes called indirect activism. Being well, dismantling the how the systems have been internalized, I am actually changing the outside. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not easy to see that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But our personal work on ourselves is so big. Because if you're well, and I am well, our interactions actually are going to come from that place. I'm not going to feel like I'm competing with you because I understand we are not actually separate. And if you are doing better, I am doing better. And this is with everyone. If the environment is thriving, I am thriving. If my neighbors are thriving, I am thriving. If my neighbors and the neighbors, it could be here or it could be like, like two hours from here or 10 days from here. It doesn't matter like physically where people are and we are all living beings in this living planet, if we are all like, okay, we're all okay. If one person is not okay, we are not okay. Mm -hmm. And when we understand that connection, my sense of ownership and responsibility for my bit, then that's huge. And I don't need to do it more than just this. If I want to, if I have the capacity, if I have the skills, if I have the talent for writing people or for teaching or for whatever that is, great. And if all that we do is just be an amazing mom or an amazing dad or an amazing friend, like plenty. Yeah. Did your love for the environment and your, your passion to make it a better place and your decision to go vegan... Was that after your kind of introduction into mindfulness and meditation? Was there a connection there? Was that led from your parents? Yeah, I and like it came actually, it took quite a few years for me to realize that connection. But I was first focusing so much internally that I wasn't making so many of those connections outside. And it wasn't until I actually, at one point, I lived in a few different places around the world. I 
decided at one point to move to California to a Tibetan Buddhist retreat center in the middle of the mountain, in the middle of the redwood forest. It wasn't up until then. That was the first time that I lived in nature. And I realized my connection with nature. I realized the importance of that. And I that started to change a lot with my outside behavior. I was changing up until that moment a lot of my behavior internally. I hadn't made that connection yet. So I started to connect more with the environment and I started to realize like the impact that I was having in the environment. And so as an example, I started to even be more careful about how I was walking because I might step on an ant. Up until that moment, I was just like not even aware <laughs> I could actually step on an insect. And I even had a perspective of the insect that was super negative. It's just, oh, you're in my space kind of thing. And like growing up, and if there's a mosquito, you just kill it. And again, like I hadn't made those connections. Once I made those connections, my behavior, it was easier to change. The same with my perspective on veganism. I was actually talking with someone. At that moment, I was vegetarian, at least in from a food perspective. And I was talking with a friend and she was telling me about a few things, some of the food industry is. And I was like, ah, oh, I had no idea that was like that. And she told me like, oh, from everything that you're saying, it seems like you're actually vegan, like in your perspective on compassion and how you're relating to things. And I was like, yes, but I didn't have that piece of information. Therefore I couldn't make that choice. Yeah. Once I had that information in that moment, I was like, I'm actually vegan, which meant then that all of my food is actually plant-based. Like, and this is one of the things that I, that I often share with people. I'm vegan. I don't just eat a vegan diet. I am vegan in terms of my understanding on compassion for all beings, including people. Thank you. Yes. Animals, of course. And... Of course, all of my behavior, not of course, but for me, of course, from that moment on, through that realization, my behavior started to align to that perspective on how I want to live my life and that life philosophy. I tell a lot of times to people, whatever it is your entry work, just like I started to change my diet because of my health, it's whatever that is. Good, because we all have our own entryway, our own journey. But there's a difference between choosing a vegan diet and actually an understanding on being compassionate as a framework for how we live our lives. So it took me quite a, a few years in, in different stages in, within myself to make those external connections, both from a understanding okay like how do i create more changes in my actions externally because we have patterns of behavior that we need to realize how do we rewire our brain how do we rewire the energetic patterns within our body so that we can actually create sustainable changes and as well until we know the information right. we're not going to change certain behaviors we need to, to take responsibility and, and understand. And, and again, being compassionate. I didn't know what I know now. So I don't judge past Brian just like I don't judge others because I didn't know what I know now. And I did the best that I could in those moments. Now I know this and I know that I know nothing. <laughs> like <laughs> I know just this little bit. And I know that... I am not feeling guilty about that because that's all that I can know at this moment. And that being said, my learnings, I can share it. I can share with others what I have learned. Even if it's just a little bit, I can share them with others. I can share my perspectives and I can have conversations with people. I'm not going to judge them. I'm not going to point fingers. I think that is not a, a great way on creating 
uh, connection. That's not a great way on understanding how we communicate and how we create change. Because if I point my fingers to you, you're going to go in defensive mode. You're not going to be open to exploring what we're talking about. So this is a lot of times an understanding on how we operate from an emotional, psychological perspective to create changes. And yes, of course, there's for some people it, it works. You know, it's just like you go on, on different ways of activism. You go and you actually go super hard to someone and that might be helpful for some people. But for a lot of people, that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. So we need to actually create connections and create a way of understanding on, okay, like, how can I compassionately share this? Because perhaps the other person doesn't know or doesn't know how they are relating to that or they don't know the impact on that because I didn't know it before. So why would they? Something you said is really striking to me because you said that you moved to California and you were living in the Redwoods and up to that point you were doing the inner work and then that outer work came because of that connection. And I'm realizing, and I think I tried to do outer work without doing inner work first. In terms of, I, I went to college, I was a sociology and women's studies major. I went to grad school and got a master's in social responsibility. I, I was like, I'm going to change the world somehow. And that passion was so bright and burning and oftentimes pointing fingers at people out of frustration for the world to be better, right? I had to do inner work in the last few years to match the outer work that I was trying to do. And I don't know if I've ever thought about it in that way until you said that. So this might be something I'm thinking about for the rest of the day. Oh my goodness. But I really do. I think I tried to be like, okay, I get it. The world needs help. I have privilege. I can do something about it. But I wasn't paying attention to all the shit I needed to deal with and how I was coming across and meeting the world and still trying to tell other people how to do that. And really mindfulness and being in a yoga class and being like, whoa, my brain feels less out of control here. It must be something up, I think, as things were starting to connect. But that's just, yeah, that's just interesting. I think I tried to, to do it the other way around. <laughs> And that's perfectly okay. This is the thing. It doesn't matter where the starting point is. The, at, eventually, at some point, there's going to be a meeting point of the outer and the inner because there's actually no separation. Now, of course, if we try to do a lot of outer work, if we are all of the time doing without understanding how we actually operate, that is what it leads to a lot of people, especially on the activism spaces, to burn out. It leads to a not understanding how other people operate because we're going from a place of we need to change. This world is actually collapsing and there are so many things that we need to do it now. And I'm like, yes. And also, we need to do it well. Yeah. <laughs> how can I model to people a different way if I am not doing that? This is something uh, from a systemic constellations perspective. This is one of the like methodologies that I use for work. I understand that as long as I keep on othering and blaming and pointing fingers, I am not going to change or I'm not going to have the impact on the system that I want to change because I keep on creating conflict. And what I don't want is to perpetrate that. I want to understand cycles of energy. And this is like victim perpetrator. And a lot of times this pattern that has been going through. And I want to heal that. I want to be able to see it. I want to understand it. And I want to create change in a way that I know that it's possible. And this is one of the things that I think that, again, as I mentioned before, doing our inner work whenever we get that realization that this is important is crucial <laughs> and we need to also match our outer behavior to that to align but one of the biggest things that i tell a lot of times to, to people especially for my students is we need to understand 
what's possible. What's a vision of the future that actually we have so that we can go towards that direction. And every time that I do this exercise, whether that's with my students at uni or whenever I'm running workshops, majority of people have no idea of how a thriving, regenerative, beautiful, connected future looks like. All that they are doing is focusing on this doesn't work. I don't want that. I don't want that. That is yeah. actually not taking us to that place because we keep on challenging and we keep on blaming. And I even did this uh, recently on, on a workshop that I was leading for people. It was for, for some people that through colonialism, of course, they were victims of that. And, and one of the, the things that I said was like, okay, that happened. Do we want revenge or do we want to heal and create something different? And it's okay, whatever people are, if people want revenge, all good, but that is not going to solve this. Right. If I keep on pointing fingers and like those corporations, those people are bad people and I keep on like creating that separation, that's not going to help. We need those people to come on board to the future that we want. Right. And yes, of course. We need steps to get to that future. But if I don't know what that future looks like, if I cannot get an inkling that's possible, we're not going to get there. And this for me a lot of times is like, how can I be the be the change that you want to see? How can I be that? How can I, even though I am living in this paradigm, how can I allow myself to live and to include multiple perspectives at the same time of, yes, this is what's happening. And also, this is possible. Yes, I, as a being, and you and everyone, we are whole, we are perfect, we're complete. That's not what we're experiencing. Therefore, how can we hold at the same time those perhaps like antagonistic views of, I need to be fixed and I'm also complete. So how can those two yeah. coexist? This is a lot of times I tell people with healing. Healing work is returning to your wholeness. Like you're not trying to gain anything. You're just unlearning and taking out the trauma, taking out the blockages that are in the way. So through the realization that we are whole, that we are perfect, that we're complete, and that's not what we're experiencing, how can we allow both so that we can get closer to that? How can we allow the situation that we're in now where there's a lot of systems that do not work at all and are super obsolete? How can we allow that at the same time that we can keep in our awareness a thriving, beautiful, regenerative future? And this is, of course, it's going to be a challenge. Like <laughs> Things are not like they they are not perfect in the way that we want them but everything's okay and we just need to understand our place how do we want to be with it and understand internally how can we be with it so that we can be externally with it it's been something i've been thinking about a lot lately and more and more and whether it's i've talked about it in therapy i've talked about it with friends it is just this idea about multiple things being true at the same time. And that's harder for us to wrap our brains around other than things being good or bad, or my life being good or bad, or all of the examples and being more and more okay with, and not even okay isn't even the right word. I'm not sure maybe, but understanding that it's true that there are these oppressive systems that we are in dire need to work to unravel and rebuild and also my life's really freaking amazing and i'm so lucky and i have so many things that bring me joy and holding on to that without feeling bad for the joy and holding on to the reality of the world at the same time is something I am still figuring out. Mm. Maybe I always will be. Yeah. One of the things for me is how can I find ease within what's going on? How can I find balance? How can I find peace within what's going on? 
and again, this is why it's an inner work perspective that we need to focus so much on to have an impact on the world. Because if I am not at ease, I'm not sending out, let's call it good vibes. I'm actually being part of the problems. If I can find ease and I have the space to feel safe, because this is key, we are not going to do any work on ourselves if we don't feel safe. Mm. Because most of us live in a state of fear, of scarcity. And again, like a lot of this is unconscious. This is based on trauma. Mm -hmm. When we are able to find that space that we feel safe, and sometimes this is with another person, this is through going to a yoga mindfulness class, sometimes this is going to nature, whatever this looks like, whether we can do it for ourselves or we need to actually do it with support, we need to feel safe so that we can notice things, so that we can acknowledge things, so that we can do the work that is necessary for us to heal, to come back to that place of balance, and to realize this is complex. The human experience is complex. And as well, I don't know how long I have. I could die today. I could die in 100 years. How do I want to be as I live my life? And again, privilege. I can ask myself these questions. I can have the time and the space. I have the money to invest in support if needed. We all need to find that space where we can feel that safety so that our nervous system can relax enough for us to investigate things, bringing that curiosity and taking responsibility of our experience is so important, not pointing fingers towards ourselves or others, compassionate. All of these things are so important in our human experience because in the grand scheme of things, I, I, I interviewed uh, a few months ago this American native elder and he was saying like, literally at this moment, as we are speaking, we are flying hundreds of kilometers per hour through space. Just a like, quick reminder like, for everybody listening. It's and time doesn't exist. And time doesn't exist. Yeah. And like when we're again going back to all of these different perspectives, it feels like we are sitting, we are actually flying. We are these comets. We are literally, if we look at ourselves through some different lenses, we are energy vibrating, emanating an amazing amount of electromagnetic fields and radiation, and so we usually are not seeing ourselves as that. So when we're able to hold all of these different perspectives, when we're able to hold all of these different ways in which we actually are connected, we can be kinder to ourselves, we can be kinder to others, we can actually create and be the change that we want to be in the world or see in the world. All of these things are huge, but a lot of times, again, responsibility, taking ownership and responsibility, having the courage yeah. to do something different. Okay. Because a lot of times this, like for a lot of people, this road can be quite a lonely one because you are doing things differently. And yes, I, I saw this many years ago. There was a, a cartoon. I, saw, I can't remember where I saw it. And it was someone asking, it was these two kids and one was doing something for the environment and the other one was saying, it doesn't matter what you're doing, it's just one one of you. And then the cartoon was showing that all of the time. And then at the end, one of them said, I might not see it, but we are a lot that we are trying to create this change. We are just not yet connected. Mm. And this is why your grain of salt matters. My grain of salt matters. And whether that's inner work or outer work, it's perhaps let's not even call it work, inner experience, outer experience, yeah. the matter, the focus. Ugh. I'm going to have to listen to this episode when I need a reminder of, of all of these things. I really appreciate those words and it's helping me to process some of that two things 
can be true at the same time idea or three things or four things or all the things. Mm. Is there anything else you want to share with listeners that I haven't given you space to do? I feel like we could chat for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, it's never going to be enough time. I think that one of the biggest things that that I often like to share with people is understanding one that it's okay where you are and be compassionate with yourself and also understand how it is that you create change for yourself, understanding what it is that you is uniquely for you that you need to introduce into your life strategies, tools, methodologies that you resonate with to do that. But there's something that is universal for all of us, and that is presence, mm. being present, taking the time, especially if this is not something that we have yet developed or practiced for a long time, we need to actually stop. We need to stop and connect to be present with ourselves, to be able to connect with our breath, with our feelings, and to allow whatever it is that needs to come up so that we are able to actually be present for one another. I think that those things for me are like really important and understanding change sometimes is like this and sometimes it's a process. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand and be kind with ourselves as we are going in the journey. This is why it's called a journey. It's not like, a, okay, that's it. For certain things and certain stages and knowing in our lives there are things that are in the moment and it's like in a half moment and suddenly everything changes and sometimes it takes steps so what is the next step for you the right next step for you and it doesn't matter what others are doing what the next right step for you and be kind always <laughs> thank you for that brian i really appreciate it thank you for being on the show Thank you, Carly, so much for sharing, for creating the space, for being part of the change as well, for questioning things and doing things perhaps a little bit different than a lot of people. Perhaps. That's what I'm told. <laughs> if you're hearing this message, you've listened to the entire episode of Consciously Clueless. And for that, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this new episode, and if you did, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or tag me and share in social media. Share this episode with others who may be interested in this topic. To get more resources, influence on topics covered, and bonus content, join the Consciously Clueless community over on Patreon at patreon.com slash consciouslycarly. And don't forget, if you need help living more consciously, let's work together. Email me today. See you next Wednesday for a new episode.